All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Building and Grounds Planning and Development Committee meeting. Today is Tuesday, October the 15th, 2019. Appreciate everybody coming out this afternoon, a rainy afternoon. Uh, before we get started, we need to, uh, who else here? We have Billy Joe Adam, Ken, Glenn. We need to have a vote to add a agenda item to the agenda. Agenda item number three, CM1301E, Bossier High Phase Five, Main Gym Bleachers, authorization for award of quotation. This is an action item. We would like to add this to the agenda as item number three for tonight. So moved. I have a motion by Ms. Smith. I have a second by Mr. Bockhaus. Committee, please vote. Are we live? All right, raise your hands. We're not live on the X. Okay, that is unanimous. We have added that to the agenda. We're good right there? Okay. Just yourself, everything. In right now, you Thank you. Uh, do we have any public comment before we add that to the agenda? We're good? Before we take action, okay. We're good. All right. All right, moving on. Uh, We have a request that item, agenda item number five be considered first on the agenda. That is a real estate services. That is an update. Mr. Norwood. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, tonight we have Adam Lytle with Alley Real Estate, Berkshire Hathaway, who is our real estate broker and agent uh, that will help us answer any questions uh, for you. But uh, we had three main goals tonight. One of them is, as you requested, to give you an overview. Can you hear me OK? Uh, a little bit into the microphone a little more, pull it closer to you. Uh, one of the uh, items you requested was an update uh, on our land sale. I have a, a, a brief summary on the handout, and I'll also uh, put up a larger spreadsheet if you like. Secondly, to discuss some particular tracts of land and strategies on how to market those. And then thirdly, we have a new request for one of our uh, former school parcels in Princeton. We have an adjacent owner or adjacent buyer that's interested in making an offer on that parcel so uh, we'll give you a little information and ask for uh, your permission on that as well. <coughs> I think my mouse has died so I'm going to have to do this the hard way. Okay on the screen is a is a brief summary of where we are. Uh, the first section there, the first five rows, is the property that we have already sold. Um, one or two of those properties were not included in this contract. They, they were, we were approached by the city of Bossier City and others, the sheriff's office, so um, this shows the total just so you have that information, but the two that say no commission were not a part of this contract. Uh, then below that, pending, is what we have left that we have marketed for at least 30 days to the general public, which includes the land next to T.O. Roads that's surplused, uh, property at 4900 Benton Road, which was a potential future school site. And that's one we want to discuss with you tonight on strategies. We have an out parcel as a part of Halton Elementary School that we bought to widen the driveway. And then we have... Uh, I, two former school sites at Ivan, and I'll give you an update on those. But first of all, I'd like to ask you specifically if you have any questions you'd like us to focus on before we, we give you too much information. Just a quick question. Here it says pending, and it has the five properties. That doesn't mean they're pending sale. That means those are just ones we have out there for sale. Uh, that's correct. We <clears throat> have had an offer on South Elm. Uh, that was retracted because of zoning issues. Uh, we had some issues with the appraisals on the IVAN properties, which we're still working through, and I can go into that if you like. And then uh, we have had interest in the other properties, uh, but no, uh, no offers yet on the two larger properties. And you'll see that in the acreage is listed there in the acreage column. Uh, we have 20 acres on Highway 80, we were marketing 16 acres of 33 total on Benton Road, and we'd like to discuss tonight whether you'd like to consider marketing the entire parcel 
uh, that's there at what we formerly called Jepson at 4900 Benton Road, which is north of Vanceville Road. Chairman. I think we might want to move forward. We have a uh, Mr. Bullard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the comments about the two IVAN tracks. If I understood your comments correctly, we're looking at $3,500 to $4,000 total value. Yes, sir, that's correct. And with commercial appraisals being what they are, plus commissions, we're going to eat that up before we even get our, our, our total realized uh, revenue from the sale of these will be minimal. Uh, if how, what can we do to come up with an, a reasonable value and well, get this thing moving forward? We're talking, you know, barely two acres of land here. That's correct. So here's here's what I've done over the last few months. Um, I, dig, I, I dug deeper into the actual encumbrances and encroachments on those properties. So I have some additional information that really gives a clearer picture of how uh, that property is really not useful to anyone other than the adjacent owner. Uh, I've spoken with both adjacent owners and we at least one of them is willing to pay for a second appraisal that might be more favorable because I felt like the first appraisals had one bad comp out of the three that really skewed the value of the property. And I'm not even sure that that the appraiser actually went up and viewed the property on the ground. So my goal is twofold, is, is, to, is to find a way to get a more accurate appraisal, uh, hopefully not at our cost, but to be sure that we don't exceed the value of the valuation in any case. Uh, I've, I've been sharing that information with the adjacent owners and they're both interested. They both contacted me periodically and so they know where we are on this and I'm still hopeful that we can get uh, some appraisal that's actually more indicative of the actual beneficial use of the property. Well, I'm, and I don't know, I may be out on the limb, but given the time you've spent on this, the expense we've already incurred, I would think it's time to just put this puppy to rest. Put it to bed and yes, sir. move on, generate what we can. We're never going to use, you know, a half acre, uh, 1.7 acres. We're never going to well, use the, that. The we have no use for it. Yes, sir. The idea was just to use the energy of having a real estate contract to put it on the market because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to spend, you know, the resources to do those as separate sales. It wouldn't have been worth it, as, as you indicated. But um, we do have limits on what we can do. and. And uh, if, we don't, if we don't find a resolution, all I'm trying to do is just minimize ongoing potential liability and sure. cost to maintain them. There's, there's a cost associated with that as well. So I'm just yeah. trying to get them off our inventory. If I'm not successful, then nothing will happen. Well, let's get something done expeditiously. These things are sitting out here. They're generating entirely too much work, comment, time. Let's expeditiously move them along, get the process rolling, whatever we have to yes. do to get it done in the most cost-effective manner. If we're not sinking any more money into it, let's cash out what we can and, and move on, on on these two specific. Adam, the, the top two properties there, the uh, Highway 80 and the Benton Road, in your opinion, are we, are we priced fairly or where we need to be to get those sold? You know, that's a great question, and thanks for allowing me to appear today, guys. Uh, in regards to the Highway 80 property, um, there is a 10-acre track with a lot of frontage immediately uh, uh, in front of our subject property here. That is about $10,000 an acre asking price, and we're about $10,000 an ask, uh, you know, per acre in asking price. But yet we don't have that same pure frontage along Highway 80, so I think we probably are. We're not at a death where the fish will bite. We've had nibbles, but nobody, you know, giving you guys offers. So I think a reappraisal on that would be awesome uh, because I don't think we've hit the mark on it. Um, 
In regards to Benton Road, we've had the least amount of traffic of all of them. Uh, and by traffic, I mean potential buyers looking at it. Uh, you know, one of the, the, uh, the things that maybe I would recommend is if you guys do want to sell the back portion as well, we get a reappraisal on that as well to see if we can push the price, you know, price per square foot or price per acre down. And that may help us get to a new pool of buyers, if you will. So, so I think on both of those, we've been closer on Highway 80 to selling, but I think that is overpriced. And, uh, and in regards to the Benton Road, obviously it's a larger track, so there are less developers that will be interested to it, you know, interested in it right off the bat. But uh, yes, I think a reappraisal on both levels would be helpful and will get you guys' as goals met quicker. And I. I I think that's something we need to go ahead and, and, and request is to get a reappraisal on those. Um, obviously, if they're sitting there in, in, in real estate market and they're not moving, we need to figure out how we can move the price and, and get them reappraised. Do we know what we paid for these up front, or was this an exchange? Uh, we do uh, know what we paid for that. I have that information. I don't have it with me tonight. but. Um, but uh, the the uh, we would not be taking a loss in, in that uh, you know they appraised for more per acre than we paid for them because some time had passed. Okay. Eric, question. Uh, I think Mr. Bamberg was next, okay. and then we'll go. I'm, I'm, my question. Okay, Miss Brotherton. I just want to know the land on Highway 80 is this, is that the right next to Platt where the um, they built the big. Parking for the buses and things is it is it that land right? You refer to the ten acre track I alluded to. Yeah. Uh, it's actually in the middle. So uh, we you guys with the land that you have have frontage on either side on Highway 80. I mm -hmm. think it's like 40 foot on on. Uh, she was ahead. asking about our parcel. Oh, right? your yeah, parcel. Our, okay. Our parcel, yes, ma'am. It is. It is uh, what's left over from building those from parking building lots that. and bus drives. So okay. it's right behind that gas station. Pretty much right behind there. Yeah. The the. Um, yeah. The, um, okay, I know where it is off. now. Thank okay. you. Cool. You're welcome. <clears throat> Mr. Cheatham. Mr. Norwood, the land that he's talking about on Benton Road that's in the back, how much do we have there? What, what is that track of land? Well, what we did uh, is a total of 33 acres, and we tried to reserve enough to potentially have a future elementary school site just in case we ever needed one. Which, so it's about 17 acres in the back, about 16 in the front, plus or minus. We have access from both the back and the front. Uh, there's been a, a previous uh, opinion of DUTD that our main access needs to be from the back, which is problematic. Mm -hmm. And I can't say that, that I agree with that or that it, would, that it couldn't be overcome with some type of, with the proper development. But that's one of the stigmas on the property is accessing the property with the <coughs> DOTD's access policy. Well, I guess one of my follow-up questions to that, and I'll have to go back a few years in conversation, but would we even be able to build another school right there off of Benton Road? I know we had some some concerns. I guess the state highway had some concerns about. Well, that's what I'm referring to. They, they said they would prefer that the main access be off of Britton Road, which okay. would need to be completely redeveloped to make that work because it's a very narrow two-lane road. Okay, thank you. Question. Yeah. So this is... We'll talk offline. I, I have something I want to... On that, okay. Anybody? Mr. Bullard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess we're going to revisit this again. We've had this conversation multiple times. Uh, every time we talk about the Jepson track, it always comes back to access. And um, I believe it's Britton Road. That's the, the one off Vansville, right? That's, yes, sir. Whether we're trying to market it or whether we are looking toward utilization of that property, Either way, we need to know definitively what is the status of Britain Road. And by the status, I mean what is the actual right-of-way and what available right-of-way 
is there. I know uh, you and I both have, have looked at it multiple times, you a lot more than I have. And some of those front porches look pretty doggone close. I just don't know that, I don't know how much, how far can we go in widening that street? But if I was a p potential buyer, I would certainly want a, a, a good, solid, definitive answer to what can I do? Yes, sir. And I, I think we, pro I, in my mind, that's just something we need to, we talk about it, but I don't know if the police jury even knows what the true right-of-way dimensions are on that road. I will contact them and find out if they have a record of that. Since it's not a state route, it would be strictly parish. Uh, they, uh, if they don't have a dedication from some plat or something, then they would have, it would be considered tacit because it is, in fact, maintained by the public. Right. So there's an inferred right-of-way there, but there would be probably a standard width that would be uh, that they would call for, like 60 feet or something, as opposed to something that was of record. And just judging from the the appearance, age, apparent age of the the properties, um, that street's been there a long time. Yes, sir. Um, that and I don't know. We we've talked about it a lot. I think it comes back to the fact we do not know definitively what is the status of that, that access. And until we can speak with some degree of certainty trying to market it or realistically consider utilization, there's going to always be that exception. And would this be the time to get with the police jury find out what they show, and then determine what can we do uh, yes, sir. in terms yes, sir. of... Uh, what I'd like to do, uh, if we're looking at reappraising the property, I'd like to find that out first, because that would be a factor. And then I'd also like to probably get an appraisal as we've marketed it, and then a appraisal of the whole, and bring those both back to you for consideration so you can see what the difference is possibly between the one parcel and the, and the larger parent parcel in value. Thank you, sir. Mr. Member, have we um, visited with Mr. Hefner on even the feasibility or time frame of even possibly needing an elementary school? Uh, well, looking out, I mean, I know we look out 20 years or so. Uh, going back, uh, I think he even had worked up a scenario for this location once, but it was a few iterations ago. Where we are right now is as soon as our October 1 enrollment counts are official, which will be within the next month, he's going to update our projections and we'll have accurate numbers. Then he can apply those to any new zone scenarios. So that would be the time to look at it and see what the growth patterns are and where the needs are and, and whether or not we would have a potential need for a school in that vicinity in the next five to ten years. Okay. Please. Please keep in mind, and correct me if, if I misspeak, but when we've looked at that very idea, it's not talked that much, but Apollo, we have the capability of expanding Apollo very easily, very quickly, and at a reasonable cost to where it could, uh, it could take on several hundred additional students. So we have that capability, and of course the Apollo footprint went much further than it does today. When we opened WT, we, we constricted it, reduced it. Uh, so that, that's always been a consideration. Do we need to go build a completely new school up here on Jepson, or do we expand Apollo, reconfigure those lines back to what they were similarly or, or several years ago, and we're back. We're back. They they can absorb another 
uh, three to 500 students with a wing and an, uh, an enhanced uh, cafeteria capability. Mr. Bamberg, um, question for Adam is, does, does this make it more marketable if we add the 17 acres in the back because the price per acre should go down, I would think, because you're not frontage? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, uh, it would do it, you know, obviously for that reason. Uh, you know, I think highest and best use may be commercial in the front and residential in the back, you know, that type thing, a mixed use type subdivision. And so that would just give more room to do housing and things of that nature in the back. So, yeah, I would, uh, I think it'll help us. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Mr. Cheatham. Yeah, I just want to tell Mr. Nord, I think it's a great idea to get it appraised as a whole because I do think just from conversations that we had previously, we probably will never build an elementary school there. I won't say never, but uh, there's, there's several issues there. And if, if we can find someone that will buy, you know, the entire property, uh, having it appraised that way might be a good option to bring back to us. Action item, Mr. Norwood. Let's get these reappraised. Yes, sir. I've made a note. Thank you. Anything else on agenda item number one? Mr. Little, Lytle? Lytle. Lytle, thank you. Hey, we thank appreciate you, your help. Is there anything else you'd like to? No, that was, I just wanted to be here for y'all. So okay. thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Newman, 1B is the Princeton parcel. I can show you a photo of the location of it, where it's located. We'd like, there's a motion here for permission to uh, add that to our properties that we're marketing. Because okay. we have an interested buyer there. Absolutely. And we just need to establish fair market value. Okay. Go ahead. Um, would you like to see the photo? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Um, this, is lo this is located uh, on Princeton Road, due west of Princeton Elementary. And it's a former school site. It's behind the Baptist Church there. And it just so happens, um, this, this is what I was actually sent by... Um, Adams firm they have a buyer for the parcel that's highlighted uh, you see that the, the funny little um, symbol here that's the parcel that is currently being sold this is our parcel here right next to it and we have an interesting buyer in this parcel this one acre square we have a, a cash sale deed from about a hundred years ago for this parcel and so we'd like your permission to to try to market that through our real estate agent, what we've been doing is marketing it for 30 days and establishing fair market value, and then we can accept the best offer on it. Where is that? Uh, that is on Princeton Road, uh, just east of Princeton Elementary, going back to 157, about halfway. It's right behind the okay. flag area, the church is. I, I went there, so I was just kind yeah, of it's right behind the lost. church. See, here, here's the church right here. Oh, this is Princeton Road at the top of the cliff. Oh, and here's the church. Yeah, show us where the school. Where I'll see if I have school? another. Uh, I'm not sure I have another photo. I can, I, it'll take me a moment. I could go into Google Earth and show you something. Oh, that's cool. We don't use it, do we? Uh, no, it hasn't been used in a very long time. So. I mean, all that we have is an acre right there. It's not used. Uh, that's correct. It's, it's, it was just a, a, probably a one or two room schoolhouse. It's 100 years. I remember that back in my day. Mr. Norwood, did, uh, was this property not on one of our initial pieces of properties that we were going to try to sell when we went through the list of properties we own? Uh, it was not because we didn't have an interested buyer at that time. I did present a list of all of these properties at one time. Wait, wait, wait a second, Mr. Ward. It wasn't on the list because we didn't have an interested buyer, so we knew we owned it, but it wasn't on the list. Is that well, to be more specific, you, you, you weren't privileged to be here at that time, but just as Mr. Uh, Bullard alluded to, just the marketing of these properties has been a problem because they have so little value. And so 
Uh, what I did is I presented all of the properties to the board and, and kind of got the consent that as interest appeared, we would bring them back. Um, no, but no, we did not. To market those, we'd have to have appraisals and establish fair market value. There's a cost associated with that. And so uh, with, you know, the commissions being so small, there wouldn't have been a, a really uh, a very good motivation for the agent to spend much time on these. So uh, when I have interest, then then we should take action. So but, if we uh, have these, interest on a one acre, let, let's make the motion to proceed. For sale by owner. Mr. Downey. Can you describe where it's at in relation to the school and if we would ever have any use for it as far as a benefit to that school? It's not connected to anything for us. It's even landlocked. There's a right of way that's shown on a plat that there's no road to it, which is typical. Uh, these are typically out in the middle of nowhere. They were rural one room schools. The street from the school it's now? no, it's, it's like half a mile down the road. I'm going into our, our database now so I can show you the location. That was a motion. I did make a motion. Okay. I, did. I have a motion from Ms. Smith and a second from Ms. Brotherton to move forward with the declaring one acre in Princeton, Louisiana as surplus property for sale. Committee, please vote. Motion passes. I have a question about surplus property. Oh, Mr. Norwood. Yes, sir. I would like to ask, as the chairman of this committee and a member of the board as a whole, for you to please provide us with every single piece of property that the Bossier Parish School Board owns that does not have an active school or working facility on it and provide us with that list at your earliest convenience, please, to include anything that is in the middle of nowhere, anything that is adjacent to nowhere, anything that is connected to nowhere. We know where all our schools are. We know where all our facilities are that are, have active employees and or students. We want a list of every single additional property that we have that is in our name as a school board. And Mr. Norwood, if you'll let me know, I'll be privileged to attend that meeting. So just let me know. I'll, I'll come to that one. Uh, well, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Newman, what we have is the same map we distributed at the beginning of our real estate contract. What it shows is a map of numbered properties. There's about 15 right now. It gives the location on the map in Bossier Parish and the acreage and a description of the property. Uh, it's not an area photograph, but it can be used because it's a it's a parish road map. So, okay. Joe, so I'll I will redistribute that. that. Redistribute I'll redistribute that, that, and then we'll we'll take it from there. And that is a that will be a complete list, like of all properties. To the best of my knowledge, it was uh, developed off of our property inventory okay. from the tax assessor. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Manberg. Did you have? I just want I, and I and I my memory. I've been hit in the head too many times. But I thought we went through this whole process to sell all the properties that we weren't currently using at some point. When we were looking at uh, what we when did. We, when we were looking for we were looking fi uh, funds for putting in turf fields, I thought we looked at every property that we weren't using. We did look at each property. I uh -huh. presented every property that we've discussed tonight. Uh -huh. But action was not taken on all the properties we identified the properties that had the most potential for making money for us um, there were some properties that just didn't have value and other properties for example seven acres next to bipstel that we did not Possible. wish to market sure. because we felt like we had a real use we have also some additional uh school sites we obtained at turtle creek and cape Lis Lago road that um or on our inventory for potential future use as well. Okay. Mr. Norwood, um, and I don't, I don't remember, I wasn't hitting the head as much as Dennis, but uh, so I played basketball, but we, uh, 
I remember when we were talking about getting turf fields and I asked you to look for all the properties we own and then you brought us the list. I don't remember us saying we weren't, weren't going to put certain ones on the market. But a, a minute ago you said just because we didn't want to incur all the cost of doing an appraisal on all of them, so we were splitting it up. Is that... Uh, what we said is that we would contact the adjacent owners and we would make attempts to get interest and bring those back, which is what occurred with some of the properties such as Ivan and the, um, the fire station in Bossier. Uh, we added those to the list after we had some interest. I guess my, my follow-up question to that is if we went out and we asked the adjacent neighbors if they wanted it and they said no, at what point were we going to go ahead and put it on the market to try to get it sold? We can do that at any time. That just was not the decision that was made at that time. So what I would recommend is that I bring you back the complete list yeah. and that you give us some additional direction on that because, I mean, quite honestly, we just don't take action unless you direct us to. We have to have your permission to spend money and to take those types yeah, of Yeah, and, I, and I, maybe I, I misunderstood. I, I just understood that when we got that list, those list of properties, we were going to try to get them all listed and get them on the market or get them sold. I don't really remember us talking about asking the neighbors, but at, at this point we've had plenty of time to ask the neighbors. I think it's time that we get that list and we try to get all of them on the market uh, as soon as we can. Yes, sir. I now have the map on the screen, though, if you'd like to see it. Uh, this is Princeton Elementary here at the corner of Princeton and Winfield Road at the dog leg of Princeton Road. Is it if, and so Princeton Road runs south, Winfield Road runs west from that point. This track is located right here where the little hand is. It's, it's back off the main road. It's offset behind the frontage on Princeton Road so it really doesn't have access. And there is a, someone that's interested in an adjacent parcel here that wants to buy our one acre oh, yeah. that's located back here. It's nowhere connected to Princeton. It's a completely different school location. Yeah. All right, well, I think we've already passed that motion, so I yes. think we're ready to move forward. All right, moving on now to agenda item number one, CM1501 Benton Middle School, excuse me, Benton Middle South, secure entrance south and review of options for north. Mr. Norwood. Uh, there were two things we wanted to accomplish tonight. The first one is to get some direction on whether you want us to take the next step toward designing a wing at Benton Middle. And I have some information on that. The second item uh, is the uh, secure entrance and the funding of that. So um, actually it's reversed. The first item is the uh, secure entrance. We have an estimated cost of just under $21,000. And so... Um, the proceeds would come from the bond fund allocation for Benton Middle. And if you would like us to proceed with that secure entrance as we discussed at the last meeting, uh, then we have a motion for your consideration. Do I have a motion to move forward with the secure entrance? So moved. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Smith. I have a second by Mr. Bass. Second. Committee, please vote. Motion passes for the secure entrance. Thank you. The second item, the item B under this, um, we have a prototype for a 12 classroom wing that we've built at seven schools now, the most recent being Sun City. Uh, we have funding allocated for Benton Middle School, and it is specifically allocated for a secure connector between the two campuses, north and south, and a ring road. And we met last fall with the stakeholders, including the principal and curriculum and administration, and there just wasn't uh, the impression that we had a strong need for either of those projects. And the question came up of whether or not we would benefit from using the same funds for a classroom wing at the North Campus to increase the permanent capacity of the school. It currently has 31 classrooms permanent in the original building, four that are modular that are semi-permanent, and then a number of T buildings, half of which have been declared surplus. 
We've already done our due diligence and contacted through our attorneys the Justice Department and they believe they would look favorably on eliminating the T-Building, so that's not a problem there. Um, where we are now is that we have the funding available to do a 12 classroom wing based on the, the Sun City type of wing that we did, brick and mortar. Um, if we don't take action before the end of the year, we'll have to add a storm shelter. So tonight's question is simply, do you want us to take this to the next step to get the design work done and the fire marshal approval done so that we have the option to move forward with that wing next year? It's not a final commitment, but this is, is kind of now or never if we're to avoid the cost of the storm shelter. So uh, we have the cost estimates and the floor plan that SGB Yates has provided to us, and we just wanted to bring that to you for discussion and direction. Mr. Bockhouse. Mr. Norwood, when we uh, authorized our SRO for Benton Middle School South, I was told we had 15 classrooms being used and 38 classrooms total. Is that about right? I don't have that information, but Dr. Machen is here. We have a lot of vacant classes in Benton South. Uh, if you'll look at the information that I presented to you, and I'll put it on the screen, uh, this is for the two-way split bring in the fifth grade from the three elementary schools, which adds another grade to the school. Sheet? Yes, sir. That's, that's from right. our... Now, I got this two minutes before the meeting tonight, and I was given this two weeks ago. Yes, sir. So this is what I've been studying, not this. Yes, sir. So my question is pretty simple. Are there vacant classrooms in Benton South? I've been given two different sheets of information. Yes, sir. And, and just to be clear, sir, we, we present the information to you as quickly as we receive it. Uh, so uh, we asked for the information that would give us some idea of a more accurate projection for what next year would be. What's changed... I asked one question. I would just can, I, can I respond, Captain Bockhouse? I don't um, We moved the eighth grade to the old high school, the seventh and sixth grade still remain at the middle school. Next year, when we reconfigure and bring the fifth grades up from Legacy, Kingston, and Benton Elementary, that's what's gonna increase those numbers. And Dr. Machen's been in touch with those three feeder elementaries to try to get an accurate count of who they currently have in the fourth and fifth grade. So to answer your question, there are empty classrooms in the old high school because currently only the eighth grade is using that campus. Next year when the seventh grade uses that campus along with the eighth grade and the fifth and sixth grade center is inhabited by those two grades, there won't be. So I, I don't, am I making sense? So we'll use all the classrooms yes, sir. in the south next year. Doctor, okay. Yeah. Doctor Machen, do you have anything to add on the numbers? No, sir. So Thank you. What is the what is the uh, capacity for the old Benton High School? How many students? Nine hundred eighty-seven. Okay. That's functional capacity. So there'll be seventh and eighth grade next there'll year. There'll be seven thirty-seven. There's what's projected 737, next year. So there's. Okay. Is that nine eighty-seven number with with T buildings or without? That is that is at the Benton High School. The Benton High School does. If you turn your page and look here, uh, turn to page two of the narrative of motions. Uh, it says Benton Middle School continued, and you'll follow down. It says Benton Middle North fifth and sixth. Uh, it shows enrollment, permanent classrooms, 35, functional capacity, 735, Benton Middle South, 7th and 8th grade in October currently. Uh, enrollment 737, 47 permanent classrooms, 987 functional capacity. So we have more at one than we do another. And according to these numbers that we're looking at here on these projected counts, we're okay now. We are probably have almost 250 excess capacity in one and right at about 12 excess capacity in the other. 
So the idea being discussed is do we move forward with the design of an additional wing for the fifth and sixth grade side to increase that functional capacity by how much, Mr. Norwood? About 200. Okay, so that would make uh, the fifth and sixth grade wing functional capacity of approximately 935 in relation to the functional capacity of the uh, seventh and eighth grade wing, 987. And that is what is before us now is do, do we move forward with that design of that wing to increase that at this time, or what do we do? We're building one wing, right? Would, the, would the, the ring road cost was how much? Three point. It was 3.4, I believe. We have allocated for the perimeter road and the secure connectors, we have allocated $3.4 million for Benton Middle School. And that was going to do the connector and the perimeter or ring road. So this, this 3.2 million, we're basically just moving what we've already approved over and we're using it as a wing. So we're not asking for any more money that would take money out of other projects. We're just using money that was already allocated for the school. Mr. Bamberg's first. I, I just have, I guess, one question. When I look at the functional capacity of the whole north and south, right now we have 722, a capacity for 1,722 children, and we're going to have 1,460. Have we looked at every reasonable way to move maybe some of those kids into the other space in the other facility i.e a band or something like that one of those specialty groups to ease some of the classroom because right now it seems like 12 classrooms is quite a, a lot and i know we've got some projections coming out in october that will probably help us with this decision um that we should be getting any time well, around the corner mr bamberg i got a chance to tour benton um when i first got on the board would you mind answering that question the way that that we discussed it um, as far as possibly you know some fifth grade uh, students walking from one campus where they would be housed to the other to use some of those classrooms how that would function right. in the school capacity well i would just recommend keeping in mind that we're talking about two separate schools next year um, we're not talking about one Benton Middle School, if I'm correct, with, with a fifth and sixth grade configuration and seventh and eighth grade. We're talking about two um, separate schools. And Mr. Bass is right. He's walked it, as have you, Mr. Bamberg. Mm -hmm. um, several of you have. Um, logistically, it's, it's quite the challenge. I understand. And, um, I, I just think that it's in the best interest of the students to keep fifth and sixth graders on one campus and seventh and eighth graders on the other campus no and i agree i just i mean we're we're up here to make good decisions financially and i'm just trying to make sure that before we go spend money to add 12 rooms is there a way i know at elm grove like they do what's predominantly an eighth grade wing they're putting the sixth grade aim classes in there because they stay in there for multiple classes um, i'm just making trying to make sure that we've it sounds like we'll have some extra room in one of the other campuses. I didn't know if fifth and sixth band could go do their band in the band room over there, and that takes some weight off of one school. I understand it's two campuses, not trying to meld them back together in any form mm -hmm. or fashion, but if there is any space that can be coexisted without meshing them, has that been looked at? Mr. Naiman. Uh, and, and one issue that we haven't talked about is the number of temporary buildings that are there. And um, I know that we've all read the direction from the Justice Department, but their concern is those buildings. And this is an option to take money that's already been dedicated to Benton Middle, where a ring road was needed when we had the high school there was when that plan was developed in 2012 and the bond issue. But to take that and to reallocate these funds to build this wing and to try to get that done under the gun so that we're not having a million dollars added expense with a storm shelter, but to get this 12 additional wing added on there and so that we can get rid of how many T buildings? 17? 14? We've got quite a bit, yes, ma'am. Um, and we're um, currently using seven of those right now. And why is that? Why are we using T buildings if I'm looking at a current functional capacity of yeah. 1,700, yet we only have enrollment of 
when the Justice Department only approved for that to be done, we were having all of that reviewed. They only approved for the eighth grade to go over there, didn't they? Because we couldn't do anything until the Justice Department made the approval and they gave that that simple approval to do that right at the last week before school started. There are some AIM classes and itinerant classes that are being taught in those six or seven T buildings. They're not being used all day, every day. And that was a condition that the Justice Department was in agreement with. So the, the reason they're being used and not the additional classrooms in the former high school is because of their location and the logistics of getting students to and from those buildings in a timely manner. Do you have anything to add to that? That's Doctor? absolutely correct. Uh, we discussed that, Mr. Cheatham, Mr. Van Berg, uh, Mr. Dean actually came out and we discussed those options. So you're saying we're still having to use two buildings at one of the locations for two grades? That's correct, yes, time. sir. For, as Mr. Downey mentioned, AIM classes, itinerant teachers, talented art, and a couple of electives. I mean, and just based on the actual numbers are there, we're at 98% capacity next year. How much money would have to come from other sources that is not currently dedicated to the secure connector and ring road, Mr. Norwood? At this time, uh, we're a couple hundred thousand under our available funds, but after, after December, uh, then we'd need an, another several hundred thousand dollars to do the same project. So currently, it's all within the Benton Middle allocation. Mr. Bockhouse? So we're going to delete the thoughts of improving the stadium improving the parking, demolishing the baseball field. Wasn't that money also coming from the allocated money? Uh, we have a plan that was approved three years ago that only addressed the ring road and the um, secure connector. That, that's the only item, items that were listed. We've had discussions of other projects, and some of those have moved forward as maintenance projects. But the board has not taken any action to authorize any additional projects up until now. Yeah, we don't have anything else like that going on. Right and we have three of the fastest growing elementary schools in the parish that are feeding into Benton Elementary, I mean, into Benton Middle School there. I mean, with the number of T buildings, I mean, I think time is of the essence in that we don't, if we wait past December and putting this in and moving forward on this, we're going to not, we're going to be a million dollars short. So with that, I'd like to make a motion that we proceed. I have a question. I have a motion from Ms. Smith. I have a comment from Mr. Cheatham first and then Ms. Brotherton. Yeah, I, I uh, toured this facility and, and we, at the time, we were, my question was, well, can't we just transport some of these students over here? And there's just no way in a time frame in between classes for those kids to make that. Uh, I have no problem. Uh, I'm not on this committee. But when it comes to the board, I'll be in favor of this as long as it's not taking money out of any other projects. If we're using the $3.4 million that was already set aside for Benton to be a road, and we've now realized that this will help us with the DOJ, this will help us get rid of uh, temporary classrooms, it'll give us room to grow, and um, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm for this, and, and we'll be voting for it when it comes to the full board. Brotherton? Yeah. Um, like, I don't have a problem if it's needed. I mean, uh, so right now, we're going to vote to go forward and putting the plan together, correct? But this does not mean that it's going to go ahead of projects being done. Am I correct? Because I don't think this project needs to go ahead of other projects that have been sitting there waiting to be done. You see what I'm saying? Mr. Norwood, is it my understanding that this motion is to restructure the bond program uh, dedicated to Benton Middle School for the ring road and the, and the building, the secure connector. This motion is to restructure that commitment and move forward with looking in, because we still have to have DOJ approval to do this wing, is that correct? Uh, technically that is correct, but it's already been reviewed. Uh, but to answer the question specifically, it would fall in line behind Halton and Cope. Those are the two you approved last spring. 
uh, this would go back to our bond council for consideration for selling the bonds, and we'd bring back a recommendation on that next month. But, but that the design is so. Design what do we do to circumvent the additional storm shelter costs that we could incur? I worded this motion very carefully to authorize design only, so we could make that happen. Uh, and that design would only be good for six to twelve months without you know it, it being needing further review because the approvals expire in six to twelve months so this is a window of opportunity to avoid a storm shelter if you're interested in, in moving forward and, and just to be clear this started with a this started with our projections for Benton showing that we were going to need additional classrooms within the next <coughs> five years regardless that's where this started so am I understanding you that dirt would have to be turned within six to 12 months of that date? Is that what you're saying? Six to 12 months once that approval is um, done? Technically, I would say we would want it to. I can't so say that. So that's a that yes? Yes. Okay. I just, that's what I want to know. But it has to be submitted to the fire marshal prior to December Ex 31st. Excuse me, Mr. Right, Newman. Correct. Yeah, Mr. Norwood, go ahead and finish. I, some, sometimes things are not simple yes or no answers. And I apologize for that, but I cannot give you erroneous information. And so when you ask for a yes or a no, sometimes it doesn't actually give you a realistic picture of what we're really dealing with. And again, I apologize for that. But in this case, it's not up to us. It's up to the jurisdictions that approve it at the state and local level to tell us what we can and can't do. And we're just trying to simply not miss an opportunity. We'll keep you posted on how things develop, but we don't always know all the answers tonight. We're doing the best we can to present what we do know as fast as we can, but just understand that there's still some unknowns to what we're doing here. We're simply trying to save a few hundred thousand dollars because we know the need has been identified within the next five years or so that we'll need additional classrooms and this is our best opportunity to get it. I'll second her motion. I'll second Tammy's motion. Okay. A motion by Ms. Smith, a second by Mr. Bass. Mr. Buller, did you want to speak before the vote? No, I was just going to offer up a second. To okay. The, to the so I have a motion by Ms. Smith and a second by Mr. Bass to restructure the 2012 bond construction program to reflect changes we have discussed. Committee, please vote. All in favor? Motion passes. All right, moving on, agenda item number two, CM1703C, Plain Dealing, Entrance Canopy. Mr. Norwood. Thank you, sir. You gave us an action item to come back with two potential sources of funding. Uh, they're both bond fund, but they're two different pockets of money. Um, what we presented last time was the three options for canopies, including the front canopy to the bus, which was the main priority. We also presented uh, the cost of canopies going back to the ban room, which we're not recommending. But for the potential sources of funding, we have two. One of them is we seem to be getting a favorable result on our local services agreement, and it is very possible that we may not need to use the allocation for plain dealing for that. It's covered by the value of the land we exchanged. So one potential source of funding is the money that has been potentially allocated for asphalt. Um, you gave us instructions previously to keep a strict accounting by school for that, and we have been. And so I believe that the way that it's structured, that the, the cost of what we've already done at Plain Dealing is covered by the land we've already exchanged. So that's one potential source of funding, $39,000, which is more than we need for this project. Secondly, uh, as we've mentioned before, we have some unutilized balances in other projects that have been completed and are ready to, to go back into the bond program for some use. That would be another potential source of funding, but I, I don't think that would be necessary. I think that we could simply fund it by 2012 bond fund. It would be coded to plain dealing, and then that, that money would be released from the local services agreement. Mr. Cheatham. The $27,000, who, who gave us that bid or who gave us the, who's 
Who's doing the work for that? Uh, Mr. Roger contacted the local company that does a lot of work for us, uh, both directly and as a subcontractor on most of our new schools. And so uh, they gave, they usually give us the best price. Uh, the name of the company was Morse. Okay, and the, the reason I'm asking that question, uh, when Mr. Roger came up to us and we asked him, kind of put him on the spot how much he thought it would cost, he said 27000 and then now we got the bid, and it's 27. Either he's dead on he's the money, that good. pretty solid, <laughs> or, uh, or so, he may have done his homework. So, well, I'm sure he had. But did we do a second bid at all on this, or did we get a second opinion to see if 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 someone could save some money? I did not. Uh, we contacted a local vendor from that area, and I have not received the price from him at this time. Uh, Obviously, if we get a cheaper price, we would go with that price. We won't, but I didn't want to take it off the agenda tonight. Sure. Well, if he's now, as far as that goes, I didn't even pick up on what you just said until you said it. So um, he gave me an over-the-phone price the first time for uh, uh, – actually, he gave me a footage, and I, I laid out that, that number. He did not. So I did not meet him. My foreman did. So the second price came out the same. I'm not going to say that's coincidence. I don't know. I need to go find out. But we can get another price for that, too. Thank you. We can you. get multiple prices for it. I just think it'll be, it, for, for, for nothing else, I, I, I know we, we, we trust you, and you were probably dead on the money with that. But when it comes in at the same price you kind of gave us a heads up of, it, it, it could almost come across as you just made a phone call, hey, they're willing to spend 27000 and then we get an invoice for 27000 So if we could get at least you know one or two bids we could at least yes. see that i'm not looking for approval for that contractor i'm looking for approval for those funds right. and we will if we get them at a lower price then we're going to go with that lower yeah. price so we'll, thank you Stacey. we just didn't want to slow the process down tonight and take it off the agenda thank you. mr dean has yeah, I, mr dean contractor from plain dealing and, and he is swamped right now he said so he would not be able to that to bid yeah, so we're trying to locate another, but I don't, don't want to slow the process down. We can still get another price. Well, we appreciate you reaching out to somebody we brought to your attention, so we appreciate your, yes. your team doing that. So they did do some diligence there. So, um, But as he said, they're looking for specifically allocation of funds, not necessarily award of a contract at this time. Ms. Smith. Several of us did visit Plain Dealing, what, a couple of weeks ago? And um, Ms. Isabar, you know, had asked for a couple of three different things. When it, when it came down to it, she said, if I could just have, you know, just my canopy extended to here. She said, I don't even have to have it run like a T so that the kids can go under it. She said, I'll have each bus pull up and the kids get on. So they have looked at doing everything they could to possibly um, cut down the amount that would needed to be done. So Mr. Dean's not on this committee, so on his behalf, I will um, make the motion. Everybody else is willing to make a motion tonight, but I'll go ahead and do it to recommend that we authorize to proceed with the construction of the sidewalk canopy for the south entrance at Plain Dealing at an estimated construction cost of 27000 funded by Bond Construction. Second. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Smith, a second by Mr. Bullard. Committee, please vote. All in favor? Motion passes. All right, agenda item number three. This is the one that the committee added unanimously. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open it up for public comment for agenda item number three, which is CM1301E, Bossier High, phase five, main gym bleachers, permission to award, uh, permission for award of quotation. Any public comment? All right, moving on. Mr. Norwood, agenda item number three, sir. Bozier Bleachers. Thank you. This is an item that originated with a request through board member Mrs. Darby. It's something we've discussed on and off uh, during the planning process for Bozier High, but no action has been taken. And so uh, these particular bleachers are, are some of our oldest high school main gym bleachers in the parish. They've actually outlasted Airline and Parkway and some of the other equivalent bleachers. And uh, this is an opportunity to not only replace them and get a better condition, but add handicap accessibility and handrails. So uh, the estimated cost is, is under $150,000. And we'd like permission to add this as a phase 
of the Bossier High um, improvements? All right, I have a couple questions. Uh, first, will they lose capacity with the new bleacher setup? Mr. Roger, do you have those numbers? No, sorry. Yes, sir, that's correct. They will lose capacity? Yes, sir. A lot? How much? Uh, approximately 100. 60 to 100. I'm not, I don't have the exact count. Is that because of the handicap accommodations? That and the, the railing system down the aisles, the spacing will be greater than what's existing now. They'll lose basically a row, a vertical row of seats. For on each aisle. aisle? Yes, sir, which comes out to about 40 or to 60, somewhere around in there. Okay. So give or take some other areas for handicap accessibility seats and stuff that it could be between 60 and 100. Okay. Will a contractor be performing this work or will yes, your sir. department be performing this? Contractor, yes. All right. So my next question is, can this be completed before the start of the season? No, sir. No, it cannot be. No, sir. We will be negotiating with the school on start times and, uh, and completion times as we can get a, a deadline on when the, the bleachers can be delivered. How long does a project of this scope take? Do you have any idea? Installation-wise, uh, in past experiences, probably about a, uh, probably about a week. Mr. Downey? So is this something that we're planning on doing during the season, or would they have to wait until the season is over and complete? It was something that we discussed with um, Mr. Thrash and his team. To, to, we're just going to negotiate it. Once I got the quote, now I can find out what day of delivery we can kind of achieve and see where it falls on the basketball schedule and see if it's possible to fit it in between some home games. Thanksgiving or Christmas? I don't think it'll come that quick. I think you're going to be 100, 100 days out for delivery. So he might have to relocate some home games for, a week, we for a week or two. Just depends on schedule yes. of contractor, schedule of school. Or we delay installation till a later date. Till after, after season. season. That's correct. Okay. We have not narrowed those down yet. We're, we're in negotiations. Okay. Mr. Cheatham? The cost of this, of the, the 150000 is that leftover money from Bozier's? Uh, yes, we have um, a placeholder for, I think, 200000 as a very conservative before we had sized it up. And, and we've been discussing this, uh, but we were waiting until we completed the previous phases of the turf and the stadium improvement so we could see what our balances really were. So the money is, is still available within the Bossier allocation. I, and, I, and I ask that, and I'm, I'm in support of this. I hate that it's going to take 60 to 100 uh, seats out because I've been to several games last year where it was sold out, you know, so that and standing room only. So, you know, they, they do a good job of, of getting a crowd there. But I guess the reason I ask that question is we keep adding 27,000 here, 150 here. And the next thing you know, after we, you know, after Halton gets their big project done, after Cope, South Bozier's Parkway's got about 5.6 million. I don't want that to keep shrinking. Uh, so I'm all for this project, but as long as it's within money that we had already allotted for them and not taking money from, from other projects. All right. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I have a motion by Ms. Brotherton. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Bass. Uh, committee, please vote. All in favor? Motion passes. And Mr. Roger, you'll work with Mr. Thrash and Coach Bohan and them. Yeah. All right. Agenda item number four, Bossier Parish Police Jury Local Services Agreement update. Mr. Norwood. Yes, sir. This is a follow-up on the action item from last month where you added COPE, the uh, outdoor asphalt court, to the local services agreement for asphalt and land and uh, you asked for updates so um, we're not complete yet but we were recently invoiced for the improvements on Kingston Road so we have those numbers as being complete and if you look at the uh, bottom of page four on your handout or on the screen you'll see a recap of the estimated cost Kingston Road is five hundred and twenty one thousand dollars plain dealing forty three thousand 
and then we have three track overlays or three asphalt overlays remaining. Um, you asked for an update on the schedule on those. Um, the parish is getting with our maintenance department and the school principals this week to try to finalize those schedules. Uh, the the uh, track at Parkway Stadium there, Preston Crown over at Elm Grove Middle. Um, Mr. Bates has asked that it be after November 8th because it's right there on the main stadium and they have football games. Um, Mr. Thrash has said he could be a little more flexible at Bossier High because it's separate field, separate access. Uh, so we're looking at probably scheduling those and having some firm dates within the next few weeks. Um, and then COPE would follow after that. Um, it is also, we've learned, now that the parish has had a chance to look at them, the scope of work may be less at Bossier High. It may not require milling. So there could be a, a savings there. It also would take two or three days instead of a week to do the work. So that gives us more flexibility with scheduling that. So um, I mentioned to you last time that uh, this, they had some commitments, some previous commitments on their asphalt overlay program. Or they're wrapping those up and they should be able to get on these really soon. So I should have dates really soon. Um, just to remind you of the funding sources on our end, we've allocated funding from Benton High School for offsite improvements, um, funding for the Bossier High School track from Bossier High, and then partial funding from Plain Dealing for the asphalt overlay there. Um, all of those original estimates on the asphalt overlays are actually, um, the estimates are more than they're actually costing, so that's a favorable result. And right now we have forty to fifty thousand dollars that is uh, unobligated. Uh, but as you stated previously, also your intention was for us to track by school and to not use the funds from a particular school if they weren't needed for those particular projects. So we're, we're trying to balance that out. But most of the actual cash funds, so to speak, from bond are actually going toward Kingston. And the other improvements are being funded by the exchange of the land. That was the agreement so that the parish could take the funds and pay their bills for the Kingston Road improvements. Uh, there's a little more information on your handout, but I, I've mostly recapped it. If you have any specific questions, I'd be glad to try to answer those. Mr. Bass. Yeah, my question is, is the police jury is telling you that these projects on the track will be completed by the end of the year? Uh, that seems to be what they're indicating, yes. Um, they haven't scheduled them yet. But we've been looking at Thanksgiving break and Christmas break as windows of opportunity if they can't do it around our game schedules. So when you say indicating, that they, they've told you that they believe they can do it by the end of the year? Yes, sir, but they're getting with our school principals and maintenance department this that. week to review the work and to try to set some actual schedules. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bember, I would just like to make sure that that November 8th date is movable after the Panthers' big win this week. I think we'll be playoff bound that, for that Mr. first Benson, week. I think you're going to make the playoffs. <laughs> just want to make sure that's a movable date uh, <laughs> since we're playing a couple of home playoffs. You games. may not have heard him because the silence in here is deafening based on his statements. So. <laughs> anyway. Just a little gamesmanship, Mr. Norwood, a little gamesmanship. <laughs> All right, moving on, agenda item number six, 2012 bond sale, update and prospectus. Mr. Norwood. Okay, so um, what we have provided you is some theoretical scenarios that were developed by our bond advisor, and we did not have firm information from the tax assessor. I sent those out October 2nd, so they were theoretical based on potential growth patterns on our tax values. Um, what we received yesterday from the tax assessor was a more firm history and averages on our growth rates. Uh, and they do vary uh, pretty widely for the last few years. Just so you know what it's based on, a lot of it is based on um, oil and gas, not, it's not on residential values, it's on some other things that are going on in the parish on movable property. So uh, that's one reason our valuations have fluctuated, but uh, they seem to have set, settled on a five-year average of 1% uh, 
that's actually improved in the last year to 4%. So if I'm correct, Mr. Downey, they're, they're recommending we can probably safely assume about a 2 to 2.5% 2 growth at this time. And so we've given that information to our advisors. They were not able to be here tonight, but they said they are available for November 19th to go over this in detail. And uh, you have a list here of the projects that you've already authorized design for and the cost of the remaining projects. And we're talking right now of a range of 20 million minimum to 25 million maximum. Um, they're working up some scenarios on what that would do as far as millage. And based on the 2% growth rate, the preliminary numbers look favorable as far as not increasing the millage that would be required to fund it. But they have attached a one-page disclaimer to every scenario they've developed saying that these estimates are based on three different moving targets, the assessment values, the interest rates, and, um, and the other factors would be inflation. So um, they would like to come and present to you at the Finance Committee meeting uh, on the 19th, which is a Tuesday, if you agree. And then we'll have updated scenarios based on our actual growth rates that are being projected. And you'll be able to make a decision on, on whether you want to move forward with 20 or $25 million for a bond sale potentially in early 2020. You said November 19th? Yes, Tuesday the 19th. That's a board meeting week, but it's okay. a Tuesday. It's the week before Thanksgiving. And that's a finance committee finance meeting. Committee. I think we'll have to cover that on Thursday when we have the board here. Everybody, because I'm okay, not setting a finance committee here. meeting during a building and grounds committee meeting. Well, yeah, I, yes, sir. This is informational. We're not asking okay. for any particular action, but uh, we have reserved the date just to make sure that it's available. Okay. Anybody? All right, moving on. Agenda item number seven 2012 bond construction updates, program manager. SGB Yates, a joint venture. Mr. Clarence Babineau. Good, Good evening, evening, everyone. Sir. First slide, please, Mr. Howard. Can you get it up? Uh, we'll start with an overall synopsis. Of the 2012 bond funds to date, you've sold 185. There are 25 million remain to sell to complete the total bond sale. Uh, that's what you were just discussing. You'll be taking that up with your bond council. Uh, the inflation on that 25 million is running about 4% a year. Uh, so you lose about a million dollars in buying power every year that's delayed. So it's, it's good that you're considering moving forward with that. I think you'll do yourself some good and save yourself some money in the long run. Um, of course, we had a conference call today with your bond council. That's where some of the information that Mr. Norwood just presented came from. And as he said, that's, they're tentatively scheduled to be, uh, meet with you on the 19th. Um, sources of some funds, uh, there's an approximate balance of about $1.2 that is remaining from the last bond sale. That is uh, part of the budgets for Houghton, Cope, Parkway, and Benton uh, that is left over that can be used to fund, help fund the next round of projects that we've been talking about uh, this afternoon. And on the status of remaining projects, uh, you took some action just a moment ago on the Benton uh, Middle Project. Uh, Parkway Wing, uh, that uh, project is waiting any further board action right now. There's nothing moving forward on that. The Hot Wing and Coke Wings, I've got status reports and slides and more detail on the, uh, later in my report. So any uh, questions on this slide? Next slide, please. All right, sources of funding. Uh, the top, uh, let's see, six items, seven, I'm sorry, five items are leftover funds from projects that are now completed. Uh, those dollars are still sitting uh, in each of those uh, schools until the board takes any other action. Just so you know, that's about $314,000. Uh, surplus from real estate, and these are projects, uh, that's Benton Road and Kingston Elementary. Uh, that is money that was, that's bond money used to buy those, and those properties have been sold. Last time we presented, uh, 
We found out that the transaction went into the general fund. Uh, there, we're waiting that be moved to the bond fund. That has not yet occurred as of uh, this morning. That's about 900000 for a total of about another $1.2 million. And then the last four items in that list are tracks that are for sale, uh, the appraised values, and then we've, you were talking with your realtor earlier about what some of those values might actually be, and you're going to do some additional appraisals. And so for the purpose of discussion, uh, the column on the far right is if you took those numbers and you got 80% of those. So you're looking at anywhere between between all the funds available, land sales and potential land sales of between two and a half and two point or two and a quarter million dollars. All right. Any questions? Moving on. All right. The next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, on Benton Middle School, that's uh, a little bit old information now, as of about ten minutes ago. But the, the remaining budget balance was three point four million. We had an estimate of about three point one five million. Uh, that would be a bid date of next year. So we've projected the cost in the future, knowing that would be bid in the future. So I think we're in good shape uh, cost-wise. Any questions? All right, next slide, please. Houghton High Wing and Admin Edition. Uh, overall, the plans are over 70% complete. I uh, spoke to the Arctic a few days ago, and he's in, uh, we'll have those ready for submission in December to the code authorities. Uh, we've sat down with school administrators and reviewed the most recent designs. And we're looking at some options for some temporary and permanent parking. I've got a slide I want to show you in a moment. Uh, also, to recap the, con uh, the funds available for construction, we've got right at $13.5 million, which includes a 10% contingency. The architect's estimate is about a little over 12.1. Our estimate is just under $13 million, and that was based on the design development plans. Those numbers will be updated uh, once we get final plans from the architect. But right now, everything is running under budget, and so that's good news. All right. Uh, we'll also be sitting down with the architect to review the differences between our two estimates and see where the differences are and try to get those numbers closer. Sometimes uh, one person estimates a little bit differently than another, but uh, we've generally done that as one of our, our norms for operating. So uh, that will be coming up in the next few weeks, but uh, the good news is we're within budget. Any questions on hot? I do. Yes, ma'am. Once we get, um, we sell the remaining bonds or whatever we're going to sell, mm -hmm. how long will it be before we can start this project? What That's a great at? question. Um, and actually, I, I asked a similar question to your bond council this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, the question was, do you have to have the cash in the bank or not to move forward? And his answer was, it has to be budgeted. Well, you've set their board approved budgets for each of these projects. So as I took his answer, it meant that we could move forward with getting as soon as plans are ready. Okay. So conceivably, plans are to be submitted in December for code review. You can do bidding simultaneous with code review, or you can wait after. You don't have to. But if you make a decision next month to move forward, what I'm going to want to know from the bond counts is how soon will the cash be in the bank? I don't yet know that answer. I think it's about three or four months. But based on the time it takes to bid, the time it takes to receive the bids, evaluate the bids, get contracts written, I think you could probably reasonably move forward with bidding as early as late December or even January, perhaps, which means you could turn dirt uh, two months after you start the bidding process. So first quarter of next year sometimes, maybe middle first quarter, late first quarter, conceivably. And the size of the hot wing is such you probably want 16, to seven, uh, 16 or 17 months for construction. So to have it ready for the 2021 school year, which I think is probably where your question is going, uh, the sooner we can go out for bids, the better. To answer your question? Yeah, a lot longer than I wanted it to be, yeah. <laughs> right, any other questions on Houghton? All right, next slide, please. <clears throat> this is just an overall slide showing um, what I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, in yellow is where the new admin and the new classroom wing are going on the front. Um, facing uh, West McKinley, and then the three red circles indicate uh, potential locations for either permanent or temporary parking. We're going to lose some parking because of the construction and the parking lot immediately west, and that is to the left of the admin, uh, is an existing concrete parking lot, which is the contract will probably need to use for staging all the construction and storing construction materials. So we need to relocate about 100 spaces overall. And so each of those areas has the potential to uh, accommodate that need. 
and we'll be working with the architect to get something uh, formalized um, to go with the plans. Any questions? All right, next slide, please. Just a quick uh, update again. This is the floor plan of the administrative wing. It's about 9,500 square feet. Uh, is there it any is changes based from the last on... time we saw this? I'm sorry? Are there any changes from the last time we went? No, through? sir, not at all. Okay. Uh, you can skip the next slide, too, please, Mr. Moore. That's just the floor plan. That's no change there. Skip on to Cope. All right. Uh, Vine development drawings have been reviewed, sent back to the architect. Uh, he plans to have his plans ready by November 5th. It's the same architect who will be doing the wing for Benton, so he wanted to get that finished so he could tackle Benton. Uh, we've reviewed the design with the principal. The funds available for construction is a million eight. Uh, his estimate is about a million four. Ours is a little over a million six. And we'll be reviewing those differences uh, as well, just like we can do with Hot and High. Any questions? All right. Uh, next slide. Quick, that's just the floor plan, band room on the right, two classrooms uh, in the middle, and then two future classrooms as an additive alternate on the left side if the monies are available. So we'll know that midday, but we're planning it in case the money is good. Any questions? Right, next slide, please. Both your turn. All right. Uh, the turf installer, Hellas Construction, sent a report a while back uh, providing five options for repairing uh, the drainage on the field. And one of those, of course, was as designed. And so we sent a letter to the contractor by certified mail demanding that they repair based on the actual design. Uh, they've received it. Their insurance companies received it. Um, last week, their surety sent me a letter saying they didn't believe there was an actual problem uh, or non-conforming work. Uh, however, this week, uh, I got a letter from the contractor saying that um, it and its subcontractors, quote unquote, are willing and able to correct the elevations for the plans and specifications. They think they need about two weeks. Uh, they're now working with the school to identify the, the first two weeks available that won't disrupt activities. Uh, and of course, we'll be monitoring uh, and reporting back to you as progress is made. But just so you understand, that yellow area in the center of the illustration is that part of the field that needs to be redone. Hellas would peel back the artificial turf. They would come back and hand work the grades to remove those low spots, or bird bats we sometimes call them, and they would roll and re sow the turf back in place. So as that moves forward, I'll be keeping you abreast. So their surety denied it, but they are saying, basically admitting that yeah. there was some issues because they're willing to fix it. A week after that letter, I got the letter from the conference saying, yes, we'll fix it. Fair so enough. I thought that was great news. As long as it gets done right. Yep. Any questions on that one? Great. Next slide, please. Uh, Bossier High, the stadium improvements are finished. Parkway High, of course, that building is finished. The only thing we're waiting on for 100% completion is for the surety to go through the list of the liens and double check the amounts, and then they'll let us know, and the checks will get written, and that will be 100% complete. Do we have an ETA for that? I know I'm where Mr. Norwood out asking that. He's probably tired of listening. I'm, I'm tired of hearing about it. Um, is there? We have, this has gone on for what, six months since the first conversations? And we have a list. We've come up with a list. We think we are, are reasonable. Uh, they just got, I think what that, my, my opinion is that they want to make sure that they don't spend any money or more money out of their pocket than they have to. Uh, it's really close that they can satisfy all the liens with the monies that are still available. They're just trying to make sure they don't spend anything out of pocket. But I really wish they would hurry up. I, I don't know that we have a, a way to twist it, as it were, to, to push it. But sure, we've got their money right now. Um, I contact the agent for the consultant for the surety for the contractor weekly and ask him for updates. Um, and prior to fall break, what they were trying to do was reconcile our expenses with Tri-State to fix the punch list items on the paving against the proposal from the person who originally did the work. Okay, I sent them that information prior to break. This week I got an in invocation from a local contractor. They had actually received payment and had committed to releasing their lien. So it is now happening. Please let me yes. Oh, when. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right. And on uh, Sun City, of course, the punch list is finished. The building is, uh, is finished. 
Uh, there is one final change order yet to be uh, completed, and there's, there's some documentation awaiting, but uh, that's in process. Any questions on those projects? Anybody? All right. All right. Moving on to Benton High. This is the last one, by the way. Uh, the building punch list is complete. The contract is now working on the site punch list. Uh, they've been, of course, still actively working. There were some concrete panels that uh, we had rejected early on, and they were waiting for a break in school activity. And so those concrete panels, as you can see in the photographs, uh, those were replaced last week during the fall break. Uh, other outstanding items the, are the chair back installations of the auxiliary gym. Those have been on back order. Uh, they have until October 23rd. That's the date they believe they'll have them in place and installed by. They've agreed to that date. Uh, the installation of the irrigated landscape beds uh, has been pushed to November 25th. That is due in part to the heat uh, that they had earlier in the year. And then the installation of non-irrigated side areas and trees, which is to the, the perimeter of the property, has been pushed back to January 25th for the same reason. Uh, you may recall there was a little issue with the vinyl composition tile in the corridors. Uh, there was an independent report done. We got the report recently. It didn't tell us anything new. I didn't think the report um, was thorough enough. We are still holding some money until we get some additional information. So that item is still in limbo, but we're still holding money until we get it satisfactorily resolved. Any questions on that slide? Is there another Benton High slide? There, there's two quick just photographs. Unless, unless you want something else. Go do your photographs, and then if you don't cover it, I'll bring it up. Go ahead. All right, uh, this is on the track. Uh, you may recall the asphalt went down about a month ago. It was not acceptable. Uh, the contractor took it up. Um, they have now installed a prime coat, uh, which is a requirement of the specifications. That is the photograph on the left. Uh, and the photograph on the right is, as of last week, they started to put the asphalt down. Of course, the rain has now hampered them. They think they're going to be finished with asphalt by this coming Friday. At least I'm hoping that's the case. Uh, they have agreed to a deadline of November 1st to complete the track for usable condition. This means the asphalt is down and the running track surface has been installed. Uh, if they don't, they're subject to liquidated damages of $3,000 per day. So we're going to be monitoring that. I think it's going to be tight, but we'll know soon how tight that's going to be. So I've been hearing a lot of talk about this track. Mm -hmm. And a lot of differences in opinions of the designers not really knowing what they needed versus the architect versus the contractors and the people involved actually putting it on the ground. I see prime code is installed. Are they also putting top seal as well? Well, they, they missed the prime. The reason they took the asphalt up for two reasons. One, the asphalt wasn't quite flat enough. There's a test called a planarity test to make sure it has a certain flatness. It has to be within a quarter inch and 10 feet, and there were some high spots and low spots. Uh -huh. And so they were having to work that. Was that done with the asphalt or the substrate that, under the asphalt? That was the asphalt. Okay, that was the asphalt. So, uh, and also the asphalt was uh, held, on, they, they misread the plan and held it down about a half inch below the concrete curve that borders the track. Um, and so for those reasons, we made them take it up. Uh, so they had to put the prime coat down, which they'd missed the first time. Now they've got the asphalt up to the top of the curb where it's supposed to be. Uh, they were finishing, they have to make three passes to go around the track. The machine's about eight feet wide. The track's, I think, around 24 feet. They were almost finished the first pass uh, yesterday. They hadn't quite finished it yet. So uh, with the rain, they won't, I know they didn't work today. Hopefully by Friday they'll have it done. So they missed the coat. They missed the uh, prime coat. There was discussion about whether or not to leave it out and accept it as is before uh, the, the plenary test came into, uh, into the picture. The issue was it specified, put it down. They just uh, missed it. So we caught it during a, an inspection of the site, made the engineer aware of it, and that's when he said, look, stop guys and fix it the way it's, do it the way it's supposed to be done, as is it, specified. Is it true that the LHSAA tolerances on this track, the asphalt un underlay, that those tolerances are tighter than what the FAA requires for runways? That I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, when I tell you I've heard a lot about this track, I've heard a lot about oh, this I, track. I, I don't doubt it. Uh, the, the, the specified tolerance is one quarter inch and 10 feet. That is, you can't, can't have a hump or divot more than a quarter inch in every 10 feet. Is it true that Mr. Newman's private jets tried to land on this track? <laughs> That's much as we're a paying for. <laughs> 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 the, 
Uh, I, I think we've got their attention. Uh, they realize that they need to do it the way it's designed, and that's what they have to do. And so that's where we're holding their feet to the fire on that. Yeah, I just chime in on that. Mr. Bamberg and I visited this track yesterday at 1.30 and spoke with one of the subcontractors that was laying down the, uh, the asphalt, and, and he showed us some other things. And I mean, obviously, when you've got contractors and subcontractors, everybody wants to blame everybody. But it sounds like it was a mess, but we're getting it fixed and taken care of now. That, that was the issue, is we, we uh, found some issues that they missed, brought them to their attention, gave an opportunity to repair it, and that's what they're doing. Right. Any other questions on the track? One more slide. All right, this is just for the ball field, soccer, baseball, softball. Uh, slide in the middle, you may recall the last time I showed you the soccer field, the grass was completely brown. They just put it down. It is greening. It's not white where it needs to be yet. It's got some, a few dead spots in the foreground. It's got a few patches of weeds here and there. They've got to fix all that, but it is in uh, significantly better shape than it was a month ago. Uh, the press box uh, is shown on the left, right where it's, you see the, the text where it says Press Box Conceptions Building. Those are the metal panels that are going up on that building. So that's get rapidly uh, completing. The, slot, uh, the photograph on the upper right uh, is taken from the top of steps of the Press Box Building and shows the baseball field on the right and the softball field on the left. The bleachers are installed, the backstop posts are installed, and the lights are installed. They're also just about finished with the irrigation system on the baseball field. That's the first priority. Then they're going to move to the softball field. They have to be complete by November 25th. That's got to be usable. That is their deadline. I think they're going to make that one, but we're going to monitor and keep you apprised as that develops. And if, again, okay. if they don't, they'll be subject to the same $3,000 per day penalty if they don't. Okay. That concludes my report. All right. Thank you, Mr. Babineau. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Ms. Brotherton. Thank you. Mr. Babineau, what, did we finally get Airlines Track fixed? That's, that's not a bond project. I'm not aware of what's going on with that one. Because um, that's an after the fact. Did we have a big problem? That's an after the fact. That's not bond. Oh, I'm sorry. We're, we're we still number working problems. on that track to determine uh, what the repair scope would be and Mr. Norwood and Mr. Rowland and myself have been involved in several discussions with our attorneys and the Texas sports builders, and we we're making progress. It's not as quickly as any of us would like, but I think the resolution is going to be to repair approximately half of that track. Uh, it, it, I'd be glad to talk to you about it at length. And I apologize, I didn't not, realize that, not a problem. that you couldn't answer that. I just, it, when you did the track, it, it came up, to, I just thought, well, I wonder if we ever got airlines done. Okay. Thank you, thank Mr. Babineau. Yes, sir. Mr. Bockhouse? I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Norwood for doing such a good job and for putting up with some of us uh, particular school board members, Ms. Norwood. You do a great job. Thank you, sir. I enjoy my job. And <laughs> let me just say, you're always welcome to give me a call if you need additional information that I just can't get to you at this time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Self, did you have something you need? No. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments, or otherwise? All right. That concludes today's Building and Grounds Committee meeting.